Ladies and gentlemen, chess is hard, but you know what makes it easier and more fun? Learning some really exciting chess openings that can win you games quickly. That's the purpose of today's video. I have been doing some digging, and I discovered, or rather am going to present to you, an opening that many of you don't know about. And this will absolutely change your perspective. This will help you win a lot more games with the black pieces. This video is split into three parts. In the first part, I will show you the opening, and I've put those moves in the description. You can copy them, paste them into any analysis board. And then I'm playing two Blitz games. I play one against a 1000, and then against an 1800. So we're covering a lot of the target audience for the opponents that you're going to be playing. Let's jump in, and let's take a look at the absolutely venomous Rousseau Gambit. So you're the Gotham subscriber, the Ultra Giga Chad, Grandmaster 9000 rated, and your opponent opens with E4. And after just three moves, the gambit begins. It starts with E5, completely symmetrical stuff, Knight to F3, Knight to C6, and your opponent plays Bishop C4. Now, if you'd like to uh, add this same kind of weapon and gambit to the Spanish, you can. Because on the third move after Bishop C4, you lash out with the move F5. Five. Couple of things about this move. What essentially you're doing is you are giving up a pawn to try to take central space with first e4 and then with d5. That in, in and of itself is the gambit. Now, seasoned veterans of chess and those of you who play the Vienna opening will realize this is a Vienna with black. And what I mean by that is, just give me a moment, just give me a moment, if you play your king's pawn and your queen's knight, you are playing the same type of gambit with a knight here as you are in this opening. It's essentially the same thing. It is more dangerous to play this gambit with the black pieces, but that doesn't mean that it's like losing. I mean, it, it's a little more dangerous. Oh, Stockfish has some moves. For That's the whole point of a gambit though. High risk, high reward. And there is a lot of risk here for white. First of all, if they take your pawn, you shove the pawn forward to e4. Here's already a way that white can get into a terrible position. They can move their knight to any of these squares and it gets taken. Okay, so many people here will just go back. So now you play knight to f6. You play knight to f6 because if you play d5 right away, you might get hit with this move and that's a bit scary, but you're not even losing. You're not even losing. You have to go here and then come here, but you're not even worse, even if that happens. But I think personally, it's you know much more reasonable to do this than d5, and you have three pieces out. You have three pieces out, you have a better position immediately, your bishop comes out next, your queen comes out somewhere, and you castle. You just have a fantastic position, like this. So taking the pawn on f5 is no good, and if your opponent plays queen e2 trying to pin you, you just do the exact same thing. This, this doesn't help the position for white. Knight g1, knight f6, d5 coming, or knight into d4, by the way, attacking the queen and threatening oop, threatening the fork. So they cannot take on f5. It's not a good idea for them to take on f5. It's also not a good idea for them to play a move like knight c3. It's a relatively rare move. That move loses on the spot to takes, takes, and a fork. GG. Game over. The, the moves that I think you're going to face the most, besides taking, are actually the moves that you're going to see in the practice games. Uh, and they are d3 and d4. I think it's very human here for most players to just defend their center, because that's what they think they're supposed to do. Now you just develop like this. Couple of things about this position. Um, there are various ways that white will try to get in with knight g5 to try to play like this, and knight to f7. Don't be so worried about that. Uh, I have a variation here for you. You have to play d5. When they take, I actually would like you to play this very aggressive move b5. Very tricky stuff here. Of course, if they do this, very simple, you take. If we have this exchange, they have triple pawns, which is very funny. You can capture, you can kick their knight out, develop, and get just a very, very powerful position, and then hunt these pawns down. Of course, you don't have to do that. You don't have to play d5, b5. You can just play like knight a5 and try to grab the bishop. But b5 is a very, very tricky line. And if they take like this, you get your queen out. You're hitting everything. It's a very, very dangerous position for white to find themselves in. Knight g5 you might face. Uh, but don't be worried. You have d5 and that move is in the description for you. And generally the plan here is something like this. Bishop c5, d6, 
holding this pawn here. Notice how we are not taking. We're holding the pawn there. And something like bishop g5, you can go here and just grab the bishop. And uh, when you grab that bishop, you will be able to castle. The major problem here is that you are not able to castle, but you will just grab that bishop with knight a5 and take it. This is the setup that you want. At times, your dark squared bishop will go to b4. So let's say this. Now I recommend pinning the knight. Like if you can pin the knight and trade, I like that. This is the structure that you want. The two knights like this, the pawns like this, and then we're going to take care of business later. You may face bishop g5, um, and then against this, I just think attacking is very reasonable. I think this is just very simple. Take, take, develop, you're in good shape. Uh, d3 is, is certainly a move, but it, it's really not a scary one. You play knight f6, if at any point they do this, d5 is very nice, and you have a very pleasant position. The move you do need to memorize after f5 is the move d4. This is the engine's preference. It's like, I'm going to blow up the center of the board. And there's a couple of ways of handling the situation here. I recommend this one. Take on e4. The difference between taking now on e4 and in the other version is that the pawn is free. So you take on e4, you attack the knight. They go here. Oh, apologies. That's not... You have this. Uh, if they take this, which is the best move... Now you will play d5. And we actually do see this in a practice game a little bit later. There is a trap here. If they try to come in so quickly, g6 is simply winning for black. Why is it winning? Knight g6. Oh my god, that looks absolutely horrifying. Because you don't have to take. You have knight f6 attacking the queen. And then after queen goes back to h4, you have knight takes d4. And black is actually winning in this position because if your opponent takes your rook, you take this. And this is still hanging. That's the thing. This is still hanging and suddenly queen d1 is mate. Just out of nowhere. So they can't play queen h5, which I think a lot of people are going to play against you thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to get to their king. And if they do bishop b5, you just have to defend your knight. So defend your knight like this. Just defend your knight with queen to d6 and life is good. You'll attack the bishop if necessary, uh, and many people here will capture like this. And for instance, white can play bishop f4, that's a very aggressive and scary move. But after just simple a6, take, take, they can't really move their knight anywhere. If they move their knight here, you take. And you even have this very clever trap. There's this very, very exotic way of playing the position if you'd like. Knight g6, you can play take, this and g5 and actually defending this position for white is like shockingly tricky <laughs> like you don't have to play like this to sacrifice the queen for two pieces but you can and i got news for you this is not an easy position to play at all like at all there is a way that you can absolutely just obliterate white here and for instance let's say king h1 you have long castle and mate I'm, I'm just saying like this position is super tricky to handle with the white pieces so Bishop f4, you have this, you can go like this, uh, and you can also just slide the queen out of the way. Like, you don't, you don't even need to deal with any of that. You can play knight f6 here and castle. So, that's the opening nutshell, in a nutshell. You have f5, moving the d-pawn, one or two squares is what you'll probably face the most. Learn how to play pawn takes pawn, and go demolish people. This opening is spectacular. Now, let's take a look at uh, a couple of practice games. Alright, so for the first blitz game... So for these blitz games, I made the time control a bit faster uh, because I wanted to include two in a video and I didn't want the video to be too long. The first player is going to be rated 1,000. Shout out to Oliveira uh, for playing against me. Uh, and uh, the second player will be a little bit higher rated just so I can show you how this works at various levels. So we're going to be playing our normal stuff here. And uh, we're... Only thing that I know about my opponents is that they, they like to play the Italian with white, right? So I haven't told them what I'm going to do. I'm going to play f5, and we're going to see what happens, all right? Like, we're going to see how people who may have never faced this opening in their lives react. So my opponent responds with d3, which is a very natural move. It doesn't mean that my opponent is extremely well-versed in the opening, uh, but uh, it could mean that my opponent is just responding with a natural move. Now, we know from the intro, knight g5... We have this d5, b5 combo that we can go for. Uh, we know that at any moment if they take, we are just going d5. 
And we, okay, bishop g5. Yeah, I mean, bishop g5 is also a very reasonable move. Um, against bishop g5, to be honest, there are many options that are okay. Uh, even the immediate attack on the bishop, uh, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, is probably completely reasonable. Uh, you can also play bishop e7 to block the pin. It, it's really just like a matter of, uh, of taste. It's interesting that bishop g5 is, uh, is uh, what my opponent chose to, uh, to pin me. Uh, I, think, I think I will attack the bishop. I mean, it's, I think it's, a, it's quite a natural move. So now we, of course, have to take with the queen. Couple of things now. So d5 now is probably not going to be possible because our queen has lost the support here. If the knight comes to d5, that is a little bit unpleasant for sure. I decided to go d6. My opponent went c3. We will look after. I think knight c3, knight d5 was definitely quite critical and looked pretty annoying. So now we're going to use our space advantage here uh, to try to create an attack. And castling kingside is a little bit difficult because of the bishop. Uh, so, I mean, you can even start an attack as early as now. And the reason is you're still going to be able to develop and your king is relatively safe. Uh, sorry for the cut there. I, uh... I had to step away from the monitor for a second. Uh, not for, you know, illegal reasons uh, and receiving uh, assistance during my game, I promise. Um, Bishop g5, is it, it's, it's definitely an interesting one. It's not the most popular move, but I can understand why it is after d3, because you just moved your pawn and you want to, uh, you want to pin the knight uh, to the queen. Uh, but I, I actually, surprisingly, I don't think it's going to be the move that you face... The most. Uh, this is actually what's called a hook. So it's a pawn near a castled king that can be used as a target. So we have created a pawn trade and now we will be kicking the knight out. And uh, we, have a, we still have a very strong attack here. We, we can leave our king, honestly. Like the position is so strong for black that I think we don't even need to budge over here. Of course, I can play bishop d7 and put my king to safety first. There's really nothing wrong with that, but I think the way we're playing this is really, really nice. If there was no h-pawn, we would just be winning because we would put our queen and rook together. Now, if my opponent tries to play f3, that's probably the most logical move to try to at least get a little bit of fight going here. But f3, I'll just slide in over here. And when that opens up, we've got a devastating attack on the file. So this is a really nice example of how in 10 moves, this opening just shows you, you know, its power. D4 is a really interesting move because it does lose a pawn, but it can open up the position. Uh, I think I'm going to take. I mean, it is a free pawn. Like, take, take, yeah. And then I, I can take with the knight or the queen. I think I'm just going to take with the knight. So now I've won a pawn. However, I am opening up the center. And right, like lines to my king are going to be a bit more open. But I think just blocking the check here is fine. Um, and uh, I have a really interesting checkmate combo that could happen with my knight and queen. The only thing is that I need the bishop to skedaddle somehow. How am I going to do that? How am I going to get the bishop to... Like, for instance, I can fork, but then in comes the queen, right? When the queen comes here, there is this. What if I play b5? I'm really hoping my opponent goes here. And then I have knight e2 check and queen h4 mate. They might go here, though. Bishop d3 is a pretty natural defensive move, though. Uh, but we'll see. Oh, they didn't do either of those things. They just moved their bishop. Now I'd like to take this, but oh, but, but now that check is covered. Yeah, so I should probably just take the bishop. Okay, I mean, I've won a bishop. And remember, we're gaining time. I'm not in any danger of losing on the clock because uh, I'm playing three plus two, but... And that, now I'll, I'll probably speed it up a little bit. Okay, queen takes b7, or rather not queen takes b7, but just queen b7 is played. A lot of good moves here. I'm gonna try to speed up because I don't have a lot of time on the clock. Knight d5 now would attack my queen, but it would blunder knight e2 check. Um, let's go here, attacking the knight. And we have like various... We can just finish off the attack in style very soon. So... <clears throat> yeah, so now here comes this knight e2. I've been looking to land this for a while. And uh, of course, danger levels. The king is under attack while the queen is under attack. And now no matter where my opponent goes, queen h4 is uh, simply checkmate. So that was, that was nice. That was a nice example uh, of handling the opening. Um, and now as we boot this up, uh, yeah, h6 takes takes was completely fine. And then in this position, uh, 
yeah, playing d6 is reasonable. And if, if my opponent had played knight c3, this was the most critical way and kind of the most annoying way to defend here. I had a couple of different ideas. First of all, I thought about just putting the bishop here. Uh, and the logic is that when the knight arrives, I can at least, you know, I, I, can, I can take the knight. And I don't need to worry about it bothering me. Uh, and I'm not really worried about moving my knight. And then I would castle. Definitely knight c3 to d5 is, is, is a, a thorn. But when my opponent played c3, like in the game, um, yeah, I mean, I just launched this attack. And already on move 8-9, it's, it's, it's nearly a minus 2 advantage for black. In fact, it is a minus 2 advantage for black, right? <laughs> like, you let the engine think. So... It just shows you, like, this opening is, is really, really venomous. Bishop g5 is, uh, is not a very popular move, but it, if you just deal with this bishop, it, it's just a welcome sight for you, and you don't get your d5 stuff, but you can still play d6 and, uh, and then create this attack. I mean, that's the most critical thing that you have to worry about, but you just play d6, bishop e6, and your position is, uh, is completely fine. So that was a nice game, and let's play another one. Game two, we now go up to 1800. Shout out to uh, Chicken Nuggies. Uh, this person is, uh, obviously very, very strong, and I don't know if they play the Italian, but they asked me if they want to play the Evans, if, if they're allowed to play the Evans Gambit, but they have no idea that I'm... Okay, that was a very, very, very quick response. So my opponent plays d4. Uh, I'm now going to take on e4. They are going to probably take this pawn. Right, so now we have d5 attacking the bishop. And there's bishop b5. All right, so far played very, very quickly. Uh, my opponent is, uh, is, is playing every move that you are supposed to play. Which, again, I don't know. Sometimes when I select volunteers for YouTube videos, they watch me play someone else, and they're like, oh, he's going to play this gambit. And then they, they quickly learn a stockfish variation when they're watching my game. Hopefully they're not learning the stockfish variation while they're playing the game. It's tricky. Like, it's tricky to select folks to play because you, <laughs> you never know. Like, people are camping and preparing stuff. But normally you're going to be playing against people who don't know that you're playing this, this opening, right? So it's uh, kind of a nice, you know, it's a nice benefit to have when people know, <laughs> they don't know that an opening is coming. Uh, in any case, uh, I think my opponent has played relatively reasonably thus far. Uh, now I need to decide what to do after short castle. I want to play knight f6. I don't see anything wrong with this move. Let's just develop. And, uh, of course, bishop f4 here is a very natural move to set up very bad intentions against, uh, against my queen. But Okay, f3 also seems reasonable. I really like the concept of attacking like this to try to target the rook and kind of make it shift off its square. So let's do that. Let's play bishop a6. That just straight up attacks the rook. And we're not really hoping that our opponent blunders the rook, although that is very reasonable. We mostly just want the rook off of the f-file. And now I would like to play something like bishop e7 and just castle. Like, again, my king is a little bit suspicious through the opening, so this is kind of the, the best option for me. Don't take with the knight because, well, actually, actually, <laughs> it doesn't even look that bad to take with the knight. I was thinking, you know, why don't I take with the knight? I'm trying to be a little, a little, a little risky here. Yeah, let's do it. Knight takes. Maybe a bit too dangerous, but it's okay. We're going to try to play with our open F file. Yeah, now I actually think I don't even need to take. What if I just play castles? And if take, take, rook takes, I have rook F1 at the end. So look, look at how powerful this gambit is. Whoa, my opponent blunders rook F1. <laughs> what a move. Look at my bishop. I think my opponent's playing a little fast. <laughs> I think they're playing a little too quickly. Uh, and they just, uh, they did not really respect my, my position that much. They probably should have, because I have a very strong position. All right, let's bring the rook with check. It's not over. I have a queen for a rook and a bishop. Um, rook and a knight. But uh, it's, it's close to over. Especially because the queen is just such a powerful piece. It can target everything. And the way you win with the queen against such a array of pieces is you need to make sure they don't get into the game. So I'm going to continue to create threats and pose problems for my opponent before they are able to get their other pieces involved. For instance, I would love to get my queen to the back rank, right? And the way to do that would be to break through this somehow. Uh, that's a good start. Queen takes d4. 
right? So now, oh, 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 it's, it's over actually, it's over. Because when the king slides over here, I have a very, very, very famous idea, which is a back rank checkmate. And I can take the knight. I can play queen takes, that's a very nice idea. And now it's, yeah, it's just totally over. Again, within 20 moves against a very, very good player. This is an, this is an 1800, all right? This, is, this player might be higher rated than like most of, most of the folks watching. All right, um, I guess what can, I mean, we have many, many, many good moves here. Uh, let's, oh, <laughs> I'm like spoiled for choice. Okay, queen here. <clears throat> I think rook d1 will be played. I, I, queen d6 was not a great move, but it was, it's okay. Uh, but it's just over. I mean, we just have a queen for a rook, no questions asked. Um, I'm gonna go here, I guess. Attacking the rook. And of course, if I can trade the queen for both rooks, easy win because I just have... Right, I'm, I'm just left with a massive, massive piece. I think I can even sacrifice. Probably sacrificing is the way to go here to open up the position, uh, which I guess I will do. This is not really necessary, but the king is so open that it should be sufficient. But it, it is a little... It could backfire. It could backfire if I don't win right away. I have check, I have check, I have check. I also am threatening to play rook f2. Like, this is, this is probably the most clinical way to do this, but it, it's not completely required. Uh, it's not completely required to play like this. But anyway, this goes to show you, like, this opening is, you know, seriously no joke. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really, really powerful weapon. How do I do this? Let's give a check. I almost don't want to trade the rooks. Let's give a check. <laughs> How do I... Ah! I figured it out. I might have another way, but I have this, and I can fork the rook and the, and the bishop, like this. There you go. I am, I'm using my queen. I had other ways, probably. I could have probably checked, but it, yeah, it's... Uh, now it's just... I can even, by the way, just fully, fully instructional, I can even do this. And it's three on three, but I have two pass pawns over here. So it's just over. I'm just going to bring my king. Uh, very instructional how to just simplify. And uh, these two pawns will just survive. White cannot come and take me. So now I will go over there. And this is, of course, no longer the Rousseau Gambit, but it's just showing you the power of the opening uh, and how to get a totally winning position and um, convert it. Of course, I do not need to worry about the pawn. C3, C2, and if this one gets taken, I'm not really concerned. Just don't stalemate. Uh, by far, the easiest way to win here is to give a check and to make two queens. And even something like this, just cutting the king off in a box, just don't stalemate. Cutting the king off in a box, making the box quite small, and my opponent resigns because checkmate uh, will be delivered promptly. Uh, thank you for the game. That was a uh, that was a nice game and my opponent actually both of my opponents in today's video played The best move. I mean they played d3 or d4 uh, My opponent Played this and then bishop b5, but here they were they were unaware of you know The kind of critical approach or what have you and they played takes takes and then just castled and yeah I mean after knight f6 I just got what looked like a relatively, you know good position I mean bishop a6 might have been a little bit provocative, but Still got them to go here, and it seemed like I had just a very, very pleasant position from the early opening uh, that resulted in this, and I mean, I, I was already very happy. I was already very happy with the rook, I was very happy with this, and like everything in these practice games goes to show you that even if players play what's, what's the best move according to the engine, they're not guaranteed an easy game at all. They can blunder very, very quickly. Uh, and yeah, I mean, F5 is... F5 is potent, and I mean, this is what I'm saying. Uh, this gambit may, may serve you very well, may get you a lot of very interesting games and a lot of very interesting wins. And yeah, moves are in the description for you to play around with. Uh, yeah, all the best. Good luck. Now get out of here.